what you're about to witness. Some may call excessive. Others may call it insane. I would call it perfection. Ah, I'm just kidding, guys. It would be funny if I did an entire montage, though. No, 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 alright, stop. I'm kidding. We're not doing this. No, but seriously, this is such a low of a joke. I'm just using the same reused screenshots over and over again. Holy shit. Alright, now that's over. If it wasn't obvious, this video serves to be the foundation of understanding for rust power and logic flow. After power is generated, it must be directed to end devices. Power distribution is essential to all electrical devices that manage, split, or combine power. They do not generate or store power, but create pathways for power to flow. Let's start with the root combiner. The root combiner allows multiple power sources and other components to be merged, increasing the total available power on a single output. However, the root combiner suffers from max depth limitations. There is a hard limit of 16 components between a power source and a root combiner. When the limit is reached, the error short circuit max depth will appear. When batteries are combined using a root combiner, it is known as wiring in series. Series wiring increases total power available on the line, but does not increase battery capacity. This means the load is applied to all connected batteries. For example, if two batteries are connected through a root combiner to a circuit requiring 50 rust watts, each battery will show 50 active usage, rather than splitting it 25-25. Next, we have the electrical branch. This component allows branching power off from a main line by a set amount. The electrical branch is used to allocate a specific amount of power to one output while passing the remainder through another. The electrical branch also has a configurable output. The branch out output can be adjusted to a set amount while the power output delivers whatever remains. You can configure this by pressing E, which is default, while looking directly at the branch. The branch out value determines the maximum power that can be consumed, and therefore, under most circumstances, the max active usage that will register on a battery. For example, if a branch out is set to 15, but is connected to an auto turret that only needs 10 rust watts, only 10 rust watts will be consumed by the battery and will only register as 10 active usage. Now, the splitter. When the splitter receives power, it does not pass power through all outputs at the same time. Power is distributed in order, starting with output 1, then output 2, and finally output 3. If an output is destroyed or disconnected, the splitter will automatically redistribute power between the remaining active outputs. If the input power cannot be divided evenly, the remaining power is prioritized as follows. Input 1 and 2 receive the extra power first, and if power still cannot be split evenly, output 1 gets the remainder. Let's start about logic now. Logic components are used to control power flow based on specific conditions. Unlike simple switches, which are manually operated, logic components allow circuits to function dynamically by determining when and how power should be transmitted. These components enable advanced automation and intelligent systems by combining multiple inputs and outputs to create logical operations within a circuit. Systems that use these components will often, but not limited to, follow the rules of Boolean logic. So, this is the blocker. The blocker functions as a NOT gate, preventing power from passing through when the block pass-through input is powered. Let's now talk about the memory cell. The memory cell functions as a flip-flop circuit, meaning it stores its power state until explicitly changed by an input. The memory cell only changes state when a set, reset, or toggle signal is received. And there, yes, there is a priority to this. The input priority order starts at set, then reset, then toggle. If power is applied to set, then reset or toggle, nothing changes and power flows through the right output, or the output. If power is applied to reset, then toggle, nothing changes and power flows through the left output, or the inverted output. If power is applied to reset and then set, power is forced from the inverted output to output. Before this video continues, I just want to let you guys know that all the information in this video can be found in the Rust Electrical Handbook made by Swift Coyote. So please go check out that in the link description. There will also be a link to the Rust Russian website where you can create your own amazing circuits and a link to the Discord as well where you can always ask for help. 
I'll always be there if you need me and if the comments are unreachable, if I take too long to reply, just join the Discord, give me a DM, and I will help you to the best of my ability. Thank you. This is the timer. The timer allows power to pass through for a configurable duration before automatically shutting off. The timer also has two activation methods. It can be activated manually by a player by pressing E, or it can be activated remotely by applying power to the toggle on input. This is the round switch. The round switch achieves a 50% pass through rate when set. This component is required when designing circuits that require randomness. So let's talk about the probability adjustments. On its own, the round switch offers a 50% chance a 1 out of 2 probability, but when combined with multiple round switches and logic gates, probabilities can be adjusted to 1 and a half, 1 third, 1 quarter, or beyond. This is the OR switch. The OR switch passes power through from either input A or input B, but only from the input with the higher power level. If both inputs have equal power, the switch prioritizes input A over input B. The inactive input is completely blocked, preventing unnecessary active usage on a connected battery. The AND switch requires both input A and input B to have power in order to pass power through. Only the input with the higher power level will be passed through. It is only through this input that power is consumed, therefore it is this input that active usage can be applied to a battery. If both inputs have equal power, the switch prioritizes input A over input B. The XOR switch. The XOR switch allows power to pass through only when one input is powered at a time. If both input A and input B receive power simultaneously, the switch will block power from passing through entirely. This is the counter. The counter tracks and stores a numerical value based on the received power pulses. To configure the counter, use a wire tool, look at it and hold E. You can configure it in two ways. The set target, which allows programming a target number between 1 and 999, and when the counter reaches this number, power will pass through. The second option is show pass through. This displays the incoming power amount instead of the stored count. There is also the counting behavior. There are three side inputs, to increase the counter, decrease the counter, and clear the counter. When powering it once with a pulse, it increases the value by 1, decreases the value by 1, or clears and resets the stored data value to zero. RF components allow for wireless communication and remote activation with electrical circuits. These devices transmit, receive, or interact with radio frequencies, or RF for short, to react or to control power flow without the need of direct wiring. They are primarily used for remote triggering of electrical circuits, receiving alerts, or integrating autonomous systems. So. The RF Broadcaster. The RF Broadcaster transmits an RF signal to all RF receivers and pages tuned to the same frequency. It continuously sends an RF signal as long as it receives power. To change its set frequency, look at the Broadcaster and press E to set its frequency. The RF receiver listens for an RF signal from an RF broadcaster or RF transmitter, tuned to the same frequency. When it receives a signal, it outputs power and will continue doing so until it stops receiving a signal. To change its frequency, press E while looking at the receiver to set its frequency code. The RF transmitter is a handheld tool that sends an RF signal as long as the button is pressed. It is mostly used for remote triggering of electrical circuits. The RF pager is a handheld item that alerts the player when it receives an RF signal on a matching frequency. When activated, the pager will beep and vibrate upon receiving a signal. Let's now talk about utility components. Utility components provide various functional and environmental enhancements that improve gameplay quality and base management. These components interact with the game world in unique ways, offering automation, remote control, storage, 
climate effects, and more. While they may not require power to operate, their primary role is to enhance player convenience and expand interaction possibilities. So this is the digital clock. The digital clock displays the current in-game rust time in hours and minutes. It requires power to function, and if power is lost, the display turns off. Players can set up to a maximum of 5 alarms to trigger at specific times. This can be used for coordination, especially for teams planning day and night activities. When an alarm is triggered, power will pass through and the clock will start to beep. This can be muted, however, with the button at the bottom in the clock's interface. It emits a small orange glow, making it slightly visible at dark and auto repairs over time. This is the door controller. The door controller can be used on open and closed doors, such as the single door, double doors, garage doors, prison cell gates, chain link fences, ladder hatches, and high external wooden and stone gates. It has two inputs on the side, opening and closing. These open and close the doors respectively. The open and close inputs allow direct control, but the controller itself must be powered to use them. The igniter. It is used to ignite various fire-based objects, including barbecues, bean can grenades, campfires, furnaces, fire skull pits, sky lanterns, small furnaces, oil refineries, all those types of things. It has an ignition radius of about 3 meters or 1 square foundation. So, the heater. The heater provides heat and comfort in a spherical ra radius. It dries off players that are wet and helps regulate crop temperature, preventing freezing in cold areas. Now, there are three distinct heat zones. The player heat bubble, the comfort bubble, and the player plant heat bubble, sorry. The player heat bubble provides warmth to players and dries them off. It creates a 2x2 diameter sphere in front of the heater. The heater is located on the edge of the sphere. The comfort bubble provides up to 50% comfort, and located within the player heat bubbles, it is slightly smaller than a 4 meter or 1.5 foundation diameter. Players receive more comfort standing slightly back rather than directly in front of the heater. And the plant heat bubble. This helps regulate crop temperatures. A visual bubble is created to show the area of effect. It covers a 2x2 two two sph spherical area, but the heater is at the center of the sphere instead of the sides. In cold biomes, it prevents freezing. In hot biomes, it can overheat plants if not turned off during the day. This is the fridge. The fridge provides 48 inventory slots for food and water storage. It prevents food from spoiling when powered and applies a snowflake to the food when active. Vegetables normally spoil in about 48 hours, but it stops spoiling when inside a powered fridge. Raw meat normally spoils for about 6 hours, and cooked meat normally spoils for about 24 hours. All of them stop spoiling when inside a powered fridge. It can be integrated into the industrial system using the storage adapter attached to the top of the fridge. And it can be reskinned using the spray can. So, defense. Defensive components are automatic security devices designed to protect bases and airspace from intruders. These components offer protection through automated targeting, aerial denial, and offensive capabilities. Their primary role is to provide defensive security, not only to you, but to your base. So, the SAM site. The SAM site automatically detects and fires at airborne threats, including MLRS rockets, minicopters, scrap helicopters, hot air balloons, attack helicopters, and parachutes. The SAM site does not determine what is friend or foe. All aircraft are targets unless the SAM site is in defender mode. When in defender mode, the SAM site will only attack incoming MLRS rockets. It has an attack range of around 150 meters, that's about one grid square in game. Yeah, you can press the minimap G to look at the map to see this. So this is the final part of the video. This is the auditor. It automatically detects and engages enemy players and threats. It requires a weapon and ammunition to functions. It supports weapons to use pistol bullets, 5.56 ammunition, shotgun ammo, nails, arrows, and the trumpet. 
It can be placed in two modes. Attack all, which is the default mode. It fires at any unauthorized players in the range. This mode is required for remote control. And there's also peacekeeper mode. It only engages unauthorized players if they display aggression. Now, it has about a 100 degree, 180 degree detection arc. And the turret has a range of about 30 meters or roughly 10 square foundations before placing. A bubble will show its area of effect. There's also turret interference. Interference restricts how many turrets can activate an area. This does not limit the number of turrets that can be placed, just the number of active ones that can be turned on. Each turret has its own 40 meter or 13.5 square foundation radius, where it is checking to see how many powered turrets it can see. Maximum active turrets in a 40 meter radius is 12. The 13th turret will not activate or display a sparkling animation, even when turned on. When a player selects the turret in their hotbar, an icon will display how many active turrets there would be if a new one was placed down. That means that in the image on screen, there are 5 turrets that are active and the 6th one the player is holding is the one that will be placed down. If the icon is showing 13 out of 12, that means there are 12 active turrets and placing down a new one and powering it on will result in the interference affecting it causing a sparkling effect. When powering a turret, if it gets a target lock before it experiences interference, it will hold the lock and continue to shoot until it loses this target. This is a bug and it believe is patched. When trying to cover a large area with turrets that are always on, it will be important to plan their location to avoid too many turrets overlapping with one another. Keeping no less than 11.6 meters between all turrets should help prevent this issue. Use the wire tool to check spacing. Attach a wire to any connection and run over to another auto turret. It is recommended to stay closer than 12 meters because it is difficult to get exact enters on the turret. So use about 12 meters instead of 11.9 or 